Welcome back to the Back Lab. Today we're going to be taking a look at configuring Secure Shell or SSH on Cisco devices with the Cisco SDM. Okay, before we get into what SSH is and why you should use it, I'm going to pimp out another video series that I have and it is configuring SSH on Cisco devices. Basically, it's the command line interface method of configuring SSH and I would strongly recommend that you go ahead and hit that up for a couple reasons. One, you're going to need to know how to do that from the CLI for the CCNA security exam because that exam requires that you know how to do both methods with from the CLI as well as from the SDM. The second reason is because in that video I go over SSH in quite a bit of detail which I'm not going to in this video. I'm just going to go ahead and hit the high point. This is going to be more of a review and I am going to point you to that other video series for more details. Okay with that caveat in place let's take a look at SSH. To me the best way to describe SSH is basically Telnet with encryption. Uh, it's going to go ahead and encrypt your communications whereas Telnet doesn't. Here's the uh, bullet points here, it uses a client server model, um, it uses port 22, TCP port 22, whereas Telnet uses port 23, it uses public key cryptography to authenticate the remote server. Also included in this is that it's actually encrypting your communications, which is the big difference. Not to pimp out yet another set of videos, but I do have a set of videos that compares SSH and Telnet to show you the security differences and that video actually has some packet captures and shows you how basically insecure Telnet is. You can have the best security in the world, you have a AAA server, you can have all your ducks in a row as far as passwords and using you know MD5 secret blah blah blah. When it comes time to logging in though if your users are logging into your devices with Telnet everything is sent in clear text and if somebody can sniff those packets they can take a look at those packets and they will get your username and password. So it kind of circumvents your security. That's why Cisco strongly suggests using SSH, as do I. A couple other points quickly. It was developed in 95, whereas Telnet was developed in 1969, so it's newer. There's two versions. There's SSH1 and SSH2. They are actually incompatible with each other. Older Cisco code 12.3.4T and earlier will only support SSH1. Anything newer than that, and newer is a relative term, 12.3 uh, code is pretty old at this point, will support both SSH1 and SSH2, and it's suggested you use SSH2 if at all possible. So why use SSH? Well, here, this is directly from Cisco documentation. It says, SSH allows a strong encryption to be used with the Cisco IOS software authentication. Basically, you're going to use SSH to get around the security hole that is Telnet sending everything in plain text. And Cisco says right down here, we recommend SSH be used instead of Telnet. There are a number of steps that you have to go through when configuring SSH, and I've got them listed here. I'm not going to go into too much detail. Again, I would refer you to the other video series. I go through a lot more detail on these, but basically you need to make sure that your iOS image supports running SSH. Well, that's kind of a no-duh. Configure a host name on your device. You won't be able to use the default host name of router and switch. Well, in this case, router is the only one that's going to come up because we're talking about SDM, which only works on routers. So most of the time, you already have a host name configured. And then you need to configure an IP domain name, like packetlab.com, acme.com, cisco.com, whatever you use for your company. So the fourth step is probably the most alien of these steps, and that's to create the RSA keys. With a minimum modulus of 512, 1024 is recommended. Uh, the modulus basically is the strength of the key. The greater the, the number for the modulus, the stronger the key is. Uh, we'll take a look at this one in action, but this is probably the only bit of configuration that you haven't done before if you're looking at doing SSH because the rest of these are pretty standard for uh, connecting to your device remotely. You're going to need to create a local username database by configuring a username password combination or you could use AAA. We're not going to use AAA in this example but it is out there you can use that. The difference between Telnet, well one of the differences between Telnet and SSH is that with Telnet you can set up a password under the VTY line. You can set up password, you know, Cisco if you're <laughs> not really concerned about security and when a user logs in via Telnet through that VTY line rather than prompting for username password just prompts for password which is that VTY line password with SSH you're not going to be allowed to use that VTY line password it requires a username and password combination so you do have to do this step step six follows from step five you need to go ahead and point your VTY line to the appropriate authentication either with the uh, login local or use a AAA method and this last step is technically optional but it's highly recommended 
you're going to want to disable Telnet by removing Telnet from the list of input protocols on the VTY line. When you configure SSH, you are not disabling Telnet. So Telnet is still available. So if you configure it and you don't do this step seven, then users can Telnet and SSH to your device. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to go through all this trouble and you know set up the security policies to use SSH and then leave Telnet open because the first user that Telnets, instead of SSHing, all their stuff is going to be sent over in plain text, and hackers will sniff that and easily get their username and password. One little caveat down here is you'll see many of these steps are going to be in a different order when you're doing it on the SDM. The SDM forces you to do these in a different order than you may be used to doing them on the CLI, and we'll see that in action in just a second here. Before we get into the SDM, let's go ahead and take a look at the configuration as it would be entered on the CLI. So here you can see the first two steps. Uh, you need a host name, in this case we're using R1. We configured a domain name, in this case Packet Lab. So it's going to use those two pieces of information to have the name for the key, and here's that a command that might be a little bit alien to you. It's crypto key generate RSA and then you specify the modulus you can actually go ahead and hit enter here and it will prompt you for a modulus uh, Cisco recommends that you use 1024 I think the default is 512 I could be wrong on that anyways it's gonna go ahead and generate the keys once this is the keys have been generated you technically are running SSH and it says SSH 1.99 has been enabled if you remember from the brief flyby, I said that there was an SSH version 1 and SSH version 2. SSH version 1.99 is a Cisco creation, which basically means that both SSH version 1 and SSH version 2 are available on this device. Again, I would point you towards the other video that goes through configuring this on the CLI because I talk about the different versions of SSH as far as Cisco is concerned in far more detail there. So here we are setting up our local username database. I like to set the privilege in the username password command. You can do it other ways if you would like. It's under the VTY line we do have to specify the login method since we're using a local username database we're going to use local. If you're using AAA you would have to adjust this configuration to use AAA. And here's that final optional step and this command might be a little bit alien to you as well. Basically it's saying the transport protocols inbound on the VTY lines should be limited to SSH. By default it's not limited. It is technically limited because there's only a few protocols that can be used. There's Telnet, SSH, uh, our login, I forget the other ones. Uh, there's some DEC login stuff. Anyways, SSH and Telnet are the big ones. So if you don't have anything in here, it allows all those protocols. Once you specify a protocol, it's going to lock it down to just that protocol. So if you did want to do both, you could say transport import SSH, Telnet, our login, just have a list of the protocols that you want to allow, I strongly suggest that you configure this step. Alright, so let's take a look at executing these steps on the Cisco SDM. First thing you want to do is check your iOS version and make sure that it's going to be able to run SSH. So from home, you can go ahead and take a look at the About Your Router tab, I guess for lack of a better word, and check your iOS version there. In this case, it's running 12.4.23. It's probably going to be able to run SSA. There is a, another check for this is actually give you a definitive answer as to whether it's going to support SSH or not. And to get to that part, you'd want to go ahead and click on configure. And from configure, you're going to find the router access folder. Go ahead and open that. It's going to have some uh, items underneath it. We want to click on SSH. We'll see this guy a little bit later when we're configuring the RSA keys. But what you want to look for here, it will tell you whether or not your iOS version will support SSH. If you get this message, you know that it doesn't. It says it's not going to be supported by this iOS image. The other message that you get is basically that the keys have not been created. So this, this means no. And that's, I suppose, a big takeaway from that. So in this case, you'd have to upgrade your iOS in order to use SSH. So now that we're sure that we can run SSH on our device, the next steps are to configure a host name and also an IP domain name. And both of those can be configured from the same place in the SDM. Again, you're going to want to go to configuration. Go to router properties. Under router properties, you just click on the router properties have that highlighted this information will show up on your SDM and you can see here it shows your host name and your domain name In this case we've got the host name configured to R1 but we do not have a domain name configured and we will need both of those in order to configure SSA to configure the domain name we're gonna go ahead and click this edit button right here one thing to note not only are the steps in a little bit different order but there's really no single place for you to go to just configure SSH from A to Z you're gonna have to jump around